Rachel from Clifford Creek and this is my coworker Mark. He's going to show us the Nissan Leaf today. Uh, Mark, what year is this Nissan Leaf? It's a 2018 uh, Nissan Leaf um, SL. Great. How many uh, miles does it get per charge? It gets roughly uh, 150 miles per charge. From my house, I uh, go to the airport and back easily and pick people up or uh, multiple errands per day. One of the, I think, the nicest features of this car, one of the very, uh, make, makes it comfortable driving is you have something called e-pedal, which allows you to uh, accelerate and decelerate with just using the accelerator pedal. 1.7 miles. So you don't have to actually stop the car, although on a hill you do, but it will actually lock the car in place here at the light. Um, I don't have any foot on a pedal at all. And when I'm ready to go, I just push the accelerator. Okay, so here's a stop sign up here. And I'm just going to take my foot off the accelerator gently. And you can just close right up at the stop. Take your foot off the accelerator and you're stopped. And you're locked on the hill. So you don't even have to worry about applying a brake at all. You just control the whole car with the single pedal. The one pedal. Wow. One pedal. That's it's called awesome. e-pedal, the feature on the Nissan Leaf. Uh, I really like it. Yeah, that's a really smooth way of driving. It's very nice in traffic, mm. especially when you're... This car is great for maneuvering in traffic because it's quick, off the line, it's electric. Mm. Um, it's got good power right off the start, and uh, then you have the e-pedal so that you can just slow down and stop at uh, stop signs or traffic lights or whatever you need to. Does it have uh, regenerative braking too? Yes, it does regenerative braking. Um, E-pedal uses mostly regenerative braking, but it does use the brakes a little bit too to come to a stop. Now see, I came up to that one too fast and I had to use my brakes. <laughs> so it takes a little bit of practice, yeah. but you can easily get it down. So it's regenerative partly. Um, So this meter here will show you when you're in the blue, you're doing regenerative braking. You'll see as I come up to this light, it will go into the blue zone on the meter and that's regenerative braking being applied. Now the amount of regenerative braking you get is dependent on how low your charge is. So if you're fully charged, you get less regenerative braking. Hmm. So you can play with how much you charge your car, depending on what you're doing and get more out of it that way and, and less using the real brakes. There's another driving mode. Uh, if you're not using e-pedal, you can use something called uh, D, which is uh, different from drive. Drive kind of coasts a little bit more. When you put it in B mode, and I don't remember the terminology for it, uh, it will do more regenerative braking when you let off the pedal. So it's not one pedal driving, but it, it doesn't use the brakes at all. It does everything, um, and it does full regenerative when you pull off the throttle. So another one of the features of the uh, Nissan Leaf is the Pro Pilot, uh, uh, and also adaptive cruise control. You can set a speed. You can 
adjust your speed here. Uh, the little steering wheel here means that it's going to steer for me. Wow. So um, it actually has lane assist. Now you can't keep your hands off the wheel for too long because it wants to make sure you're awake, huh? It will uh, give me a warning here. Let's see if it does. There you go. See the warning? Ah, yeah. So it looks a for a little feedback on the wheel, but it does steer uh, and does a pretty good job. It's called uh, it's a Nissan Pro Pilot feature. And I can set my speed up a little higher. If I come up behind a car, it will set the distance and follow the car's speed. The Nissan Leaf has very good acceleration for getting on and off the freeway. Uh, I'll show you here in a minute. settings for that and of course it's still steering. Very comfortable car, um, very easy to drive. Sometimes you don't even have to drive. <laughs> Some of the safety features are uh, one of them is uh, lane departure warning. If I get too close to the line here you'll see it indicate that I'm on the on the line. Also it says I just gave up on steering. Now it's back to steering. There you go. I did it again. So that's the lane departure warning. And you can override the pro path at any time by just grabbing the steering wheel, turning uh, you can turn it off by just touching your brake. So one of the features of ProPilot 2 is you can actually use it in traffic uh, and with the adaptive cruise control uh, when you come up to a light uh, behind somebody it will automatically stop and to start it you just push your foot on the throttle. Um, I'm going to set it up right here and then I'm going to set the speed. Accelerate up to the speed and track the person in front as it was doing before on the freeway. Um, it's also trying to steer up here. It's a little tricky with the instruction. Yeah, it's doing okay with it right now. Yeah. But it's not as useful, it's more useful on the freeway, I think, with steering. But the adaptive cruise control, uh, you can use it just about anywhere. So here you can see we're coming up on a red light. I'm not doing anything with the throttle or the brake. I do always cover the brake for safety because cars do malfunction. But it's doing the de deceleration right now um, all by itself. That's amazing. And it'll come to a stop behind this car at the light. That's great. If you aren't, you know, maybe you're distracted a little bit and you have that on. Right. That's a great safety feature. I think it's an added feature, yes, uh, for safety because uh, it doesn't require you to concentrate as much on the road if you're trying to look for some place mm. like that restaurant that you're trying to look at. Mm -hmm. You've got the little bit of added safety that the, the car is going to be vigilant even if you're not. Right. It's got your back. It's got your back, yeah. So to start it up again, I did just, you can do a couple things. You can hit a button here, or you can just put your foot on the throttle, get it going again, and it's going by itself. So, and it'll maintain the set speed, which is 60 miles an hour, set above what everybody else is doing, so it'll automatically track the car in front.
Okay, so a great aid in parking is uh, the backup camera as well as a 3D, uh, an image of the car from above. And uh, you can, you can oh. see how I can just sit here and nail this parking spot just by looking at the camera, right? That's amazing. And see, I can see how far back I'm going wow. here. There's the curb there. And it's showing yellow because I'm getting close to it. But that's basically how easy it is to back up. That's great. That's very helpful. And you can do it. You can, uh, when you put it in reverse, it'll automatically do this. But uh, if you're going slow, you can actually turn on the camera. If like you're pulling into a spot even forward and look to see how oh, I'm getting right in between the lines or if I'm parallel parking or something like that. So it's a very handy feature. Nice. Can use all the help I can get parallel parking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the uh, unique features of the LEAF is uh, it has a charge timer on it. Uh, and not only is it a charge timer, we'll go to the settings here. Under EV settings, you have two charge timers. Okay, and um, as you can see, charge timer only at home above there. Um, if I select this charge timer. So set for my uh, home uh, charging and I want to only charge between 12 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. So uh, the high peak time for PG&E at my house is from 3 o'clock to 12 midnight. And so this is set to only charge after 12 midnight to 3 p.m. the next day. The screen tells you if you, uh, at your charge rate, um, and it'll do a calculation depending on which one you select on the time. And, but the unique feature of this charge timer is that it can be set up via GPS to only charge, uh, invoke the timer while I'm at home. So if I'm at some place else and I want it to charge, it will do that. It won't use the timer. The timer is only um, uh, under controlled when you're at home. That's great. So you can fully charge if you're out and about or if you're charging at work. Right. Yeah. So it won't uh, invoke the timer unless it sees that I'm at home. You can actually see charge timer only in home. Okay, so I'm going to charge the vehicle now. Um, for uh, this vehicle to charge from uh, zero to full on an ATS 40 is about um, four hours, roughly. Uh, the acceptance rate is uh, takes 27 amps at 240 volts. I think it's 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, acceptance rate. Okay, this vehicle also has a fast charging port on it, uh, this one right here, and it's called a CHADMO, and uh, there is a fast charging network, uh, of course, everywhere, uh, there are stations everywhere, including within a half mile of here, I think, at a save mark, and you can just go there and fast charge your car. So the thing about fast charging is when you're on the road and you want to stop for lunch, uh, you can charge the car probably in a half an hour. Uh, from almost empty to full and be ready to go on the next leg of your trip. Okay, so one of the neat features of the car is that it has uh, Bluetooth connectivity. You can just bring your phone in here and if you have it programmed accordingly, you can do hands-free calling uh, and receive, send and receive calls with the, phone, with the uh, Bluetooth system on this. The other method uh, is that you can actually connect up to uh, a USB port and run something called Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay uh, has the ability just to bring up your phone up on the display and uh, there's a, a number of apps that can be accessed with Apple CarPlay. I'm waiting for it. So one of the apps is Waze, um, 
you can do Pandora. Uh, you can send, of course, do calls. And this shows your, your recents, your contacts, keypad, etc., voicemail. Um, and then there's a, just a number of apps that they support. Uh, Google, they have regular Apple Maps. Uh, they have your calendar, news, all these things. And then also uh, you have Google Maps. You have three maps, mapping apps that you can use. You have YouTube Music, Apple Music. watching and be sure to follow Clipper Creek on our social media channels for more content like this.